In this video, we're going to be looking at the Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula, and the equation of a circle. And in this video, we'll talk about the special right triangles, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula, which is an application of the Pythagorean theorem, and using the distance formula to develop the equation of a circle. Okay, let's look at a right triangle. If you recall, a right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle in it, as you can see. Now, in a right triangle, there are special names to the sides of those of that right triangle. Here in this case here, the longest side, which is this side right here that's opposite the 90 degree angle, that's called the hypotenuse, which means that these two sides right here are called legs. Those are the legs. So the hypotenuse is always the longest side. And these two other, the other two sides are called legs. Okay, so next we'll talk about what the Pythagorean Theorem formula is. If you're given a right triangle with legs A and B and the hypotenuse called C, then the square of the hypotenuse, that's going to be C squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of these two sides, or legs. That's a squared plus b squared. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two legs. So in this case here, if the length of BC is 3, that's this length right here called A, and AC, line segment AC, is 4 centimeters. That's labeled B. What is the length of line segment AB? And here's how we use the Pythagorean Theorem to come up with the hypotenuse. Here we use the, pop, the formula for the Pythagorean Theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Okay, in this case here, the length of BC is 3. BC has is labeled with lowercase a here. So A is going to be 3. So that's 3 squared. And the length of AC which is lowercase b, by the way, is going to be 4. So b is going to be 4. So you have c squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. Square root of 3, you're going to get 9. Square root of 4, you're going to get 16. 3 squared is 3 times 3, or 9. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. So you have c squared is equal to 9 plus 16. Add 9 and 16 together, you're going to get 25. So c squared is equal to 25. Now, the opposite of squaring something will be simply taking the square root. So here we're going to take the square root of 25 to find out the length of AB, which is what c is. So in this case here, the square root of 25 means what number times itself will give you 25. And in this case, it's going to be 5. So the length of C, or the length of AB, is going to be 5 centimeters. Okay, here's an example of an application of the Pythagorean Theorem. Sometimes they're used in word problems like this. The size of a rectangular television screen is given as the length of the diagonal of the screen. If the length of the screen is 24 inches and the width is 18 inches, inches, what is the diagonal length? So in other words, we want this diagonal right here, which is in this case the hypotenuse. So here we use the formula c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So c squared is what we're trying to find. That's equal to, in this case, your a is 18. So that's 18 squared. And this length, b, that's 24, so that's 24 squared. Square the 18, you're going to get 324. Square the 24, you're going to get 576. So 576 plus the 324 will give you 900. So C squared is 900. Take the square root of 900 to get C. So the square root of 900 is 30. So this diagonal of this television screen is going to be 30 inches long. Okay, and here's another application of a 
Pythagorean theorem type problem. In this case here, a pole, which is going to be line segment BD, 28 feet high, is perpendicular to the ground. And then you have two wires, which is wire line segment BC and line segment BA. They're each 35 feet long. They're attached to the top of the pole and to stakes A and C on the ground. So if points A, D, and C are collinear, how far are the stakes A and C from each other? Okay, so in this case, this is an application of a Pythagorean theorem, so I'm going to find the length of AD. Now, with this, they found the length of DC, but if I find the length of AD, then AD and DC are going to be the same lengths. And then I can add those two lengths to come up with the length of AC. So here's how that particular problem is done. Using the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Here's what I did. The A, which is the side or the leg, that's 28 feet. So I'm using this triangle that you see here to come up with this length right here, AD. And I'm letting X be the length of AD. So here A is 28 feet. So that's 28 squared plus and I'm letting X be the length of AD, so that's going to be X squared, that's the other leg, squared, equals to this hypotenuse here. The hypotenuse is along this side, it's opposite the right angle, so it's 35 feet, or 35 squared. Now, using this, if you square the 28, you're going to get 784, plus bring down the X squared, and then 35 squared is 35 times 35, or 1225. So now to get the x squared by itself, subtract 784 on both sides to get x squared. And it's equal to 1225 minus 784, that would give you 441. So x squared is equal to 441. So to find out what x is, we take the square root on both sides. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 441 is 21. So the length of x is 21. So the length of AD is 21. Well, if the length of AD is 21, then the length of CD must also be 21. So if you add 21 plus the 21, you're going to get 42 feet. So the length of AC must be 42 feet. Okay, next we'll look at special right triangles. Special right triangles. One of them is the 45-45-90 right triangle. Okay, So if you had a square and if you cut it along the diagonal AC, the, diagonal, the diagonals bisect each other, so that means that the, if each of these right angles is 90 degrees and you cut it along the bisected along the diagonal, this is 45 and that's 45. And then you have your 90 degree angle, which is this. Okay, the length of the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 isosceles right triangle is the square root of 2 times the length of the leg. So let's say the length of this leg was 5 feet. If the length of that leg is 5 feet, then the hypotenuse is always going to be the length of the leg times the square root of 2. So this will be 5 square root of 2 feet. And that's all there is to it. It's the square root of 2 times the length of the leg. So if this, if this length was 5 feet, then the hypotenuse will be 5 square root of 2 feet. And then next is the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. All right, in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is always going to be twice the length of the leg opposite the 30 degree angle, which is a short leg. So in this particular situation here, let's say this length 
Here was one. That's the shorter leg. And this is your longer leg. So the shorter leg is one, which means that the hypotenuse is two times that. Or two. So that means the hypotenuse has to be two. Because it's twice the length of the shorter leg. And then the leg opposite the 60 degree angle, or the longer leg, that's this length right here, that's the square root of 3 times the length of the shorter leg. So in other words, if this is 1, then this must be the square root of 3. This is the square root of 3 times 1, which is the length of the shorter leg. Next is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If triangle ABC, and that should be triangle, triangle ABC with the sides of lengths A, B, and C such that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, then triangle ABC is a right triangle with the right angle opposite the side of length C. Okay? Because C is always the longest side, which is your hypotenuse. Okay, so the converse is this. If I have three lengths such that the square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides, then that means that triangle is a right triangle. And we're going to look at that converse to answer some of these questions here. Determine that the following can be lengths of the sides of a right triangle. Okay, the first one we have is 51, 68, 85. Okay, now I'm going to show you how, how to get that answer there. Okay, the longest side is 85. So that means that 85 is your hypotenuse. These other two lengths are going to be the legs of that triangle. So here we use a squared plus b squared equaling to c squared. Okay, so 85 would be your c. A and b can be either 51 or 6, well, 51 and 68. doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to let a be 51. So it will be 51 squared plus b squared, that's 68 and that squared is equal to 85 squared. Okay, so here if I square 51, that's going to give me 2,601 plus 68, and you square that would be 2,601. Hold on, I'm sorry. 4,624. That sum must be equal to the square of 85, which is 7,225. Now add 2,601 to the 7,600, I mean 4,624. It does equal 7,225. So the answer there is yes. Those three sides make up a right triangle. Okay. Part B. Two, two, three, and the square root of 13. I'll do this one as well. I want you to determine if those lengths make up a right triangle. The square root of 13 is a is the longest side because the square root of 13 is bigger than 2 and 3. Because I know the square root of 13 is a number that's at least 3 but is less than 4 so it has to be the longest side. The 2 and the 3 are going to be the lengths of the legs. So here a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared 
a is 2, so that's 2 squared, plus b is 3, that's 3 squared, is equal to the square root of 13, and that's going to be squared. Well, if you square the 2, that's 2 times 2, that's 4. 3 times 3, or 3 squared, that's 9. The square root of 13, you turn around and square it, it's going to give you 13. Add 4 plus 9, you're going to get 13, which is the same as the 13 on the right side. So, again, 2 squared to thir 2, 3, and the square root of 13 can form a right triangle. Okay, now suppose you had this. 3, 4, and 7. Well, let 7 be the longest side, which is the hypotenuse. 3 and 4 would be the lengths of the legs. So here, using the formula for the Pythagorean Theorem, your A is going to be 3, so that's 3 squared. The B is going to be 4, that's 4 squared. The C is your hypotenuse, which is the longest side. That's 7 squared. 3 squared is 4. Plus 4 squared is 16, and that must be equal to 7 squared, which is 49. Add 4 plus 16, you're going to get 20. Does that equal to 49? Unfortunately, it does not. The left side does not equal to the right side. So in this case here, that answer is no. Those three lengths cannot form a right triangle. In fact, those lengths don't even form a triangle at all because the sum of these two lengths is not bigger than the third one. So automatically, that's not going to be a triangle. So it can't be a right triangle anyway. Okay, next we'll look at the dis distance formula, which is an application of the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, take a look at this one. We want to find the length of CD. And in this case here, we're given that C has the ordered pair 2, 5. And here, E with the ordered pair 6, 5. And D with the ordered pair 6, 8. We want to find the distance from C to D. Now, here they extended these out, this out to a right triangle, in a way. So that the distance from C to E, that's 4. Because the x-coordinate is at 2 for C, for the E, the x-coordinate is 6. From 2 to 6, that distance is 4. And take a look at D, from D to E. That distance from E to D, E has the order pair 6, 5. The y-coordinate is at 5. And for D, the y-coordinate the y coordinate is at 8. So from 8 to 5, that distance is 3. So here if you use the length of DE, which is 3, so that's 3 squared, plus the length of CE, that's 4, that would be 4 squared. Okay. 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5 for the length of uh, CD, using the application of the Pythagorean Theorem. So that distance from C to D must be 5. Okay, so the distance formula in this case, in general, is going to be this. If you have two points, A, which is x1, y1, and B, which is x2, y2, that distance is going to be, from A to B, is going to be given by this, the square root of x2 minus x1, quantity square, plus y2 minus y1, quantity square. That's the distance between your x coordinates, and that's squared, plus the distance from your y-coordinates, and that's squared. And the whole thing is underneath the square root symbol, so you'll evaluate what's underneath the square root symbol, and then take that square root to find out what the distance is from A to B. So here you want to show that A with the ordered pair of 7, 4, and B with the coordinates negative 2, 1, and C with coordinates 10, negative 4 are vertices of an isosceles triangle. And then show that triangle ABC is a right angle, right triangle. Okay. Now, I'll show you the distance from A to B using the distance formula. 
In this case, A is 7, 4. B is negative 2, 1. And I'll go ahead and put down C, which is 10, negative 4. Okay. We want the distance from A to B. Okay. And the distance formula, of course, is the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity square plus y2 minus y1. That quantity is square. Okay. So here, this is x2. That's x1. Negative 2 minus 7. And that's square. Plus y2 minus y1. 1 minus 4. Positive 1 minus 4. And that's square. Now negative 2 minus 7 is negative 9. And that's going to be square. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And that's squared. Negative 9 squared is negative 9 times negative 9. That's 81. Plus negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3. That's 9 which equals to the square root of 90. So the distance from A to B is the square root of 90. Now from B to C. We look at the ordered pairs for B and the ordered pairs for C. In this case here, x2 minus x, well, x2 minus x1 is 10 minus negative 2. That's squared plus y2 minus y1 negative 4 minus 1 quantity square. 10 minus a negative 2 is 12, so that's 12 squared plus negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, and that's squared. 12 squared is 12 times 12, that's 144. Negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, or 25. 25 plus 144 is 169, so you have the square root of 169, which is, of course, 13. So the length of A... Okay. Let's see, 10 minus negative 2, negative 4 minus 1. Okay. According to the according to the uh, slide, they made a mistake here because they used uh, five minus one, and not instead of negative four minus one. So that's a mistake on their part. So this is thirteen. That's the length of BC. Okay. Then the length of AC. Is this. Let's look at A and C. That's these two points right here. X2 minus X1 is 10 minus 7. And that's squared. And then Y2 minus Y1 is negative 4 minus 4. And that's squared. 10 minus 7 is 3, so that's going to be 3 squared plus negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. And that's squared. So here 3 squared is 9 plus negative 8. And that's squared. That's 64. And then 9 plus 64 would be 73. So now you have the square root of 73. And in this case, you want to show that these are isosceles triangles here. Okay. In this case, they're not because... Those lengths are totally different from each other. As AB has the length of the square root of 90, BC has the length of 13, and AC has the square root of 73. Now, had they used the correct lengths and said that this was uh, 10, negative 5, then it would work. Okay. 
And based on those links that were given to us originally in that particular problem, you can see that if those links are not the same, then pretty much they're not going to be a right triangle. I don't think it's going to be a right triangle at all. Based on those links that were given to us. Okay. Here's another example. Determine whether the point zero five for A, B with the order with the coordinates one, two, and C with the coordinates two, negative one or are collinear. If they are not collinear, they would be the vertices of a triangle. And A B plus B C would be greater than A C, which is your triangle inequality theorem. If A B plus B C is equal to A C, then the triangle cannot be formed and the points would be collinear. So in this case here, here's what they did. They used the distance formula here. Now I won't take the time to go through the whole distance formula as I did last time. So here you have y2 minus y1 which is 0 minus 1. Okay, Because here's 0 minus 1 and then equal to x2 minus x plus y2 minus y1 5 minus 2 and that's squared. 0 minus 1 is negative 1 and 1 squared is going to be 1. 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9 so 1 plus 9 will be 10 so you have the square root of 10 for the length of AB. Then for the length of BC that's in this case x2 minus x1 which is 2 minus 1 plus and that's squared y2 minus y1 negative 1 minus 2 and that's going to be squared. Well 2 minus 1 is 1 negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 negative 1 well 1 squared is 1 negative 3 squared is 9 1 plus 9 is 10 so you have the square root of 10. Now with AC you have 0 minus 2, and that's squared. 5 minus the negative 1, and that's squared. Well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and u squared will be 4. 5 minus the negative 1 is 6 squared. The 6, you're going to get 36. 36 plus 6 will give you the square root of 40. Okay, so here we can see that by looking at this, if I add these two together, I'm going to get the square root of 40. Because the square root of 40, if you think of this, you want the largest perfect square that would go into 40. That's going to be 4. And 4 goes into 40 10 times. So it'll be 4 times 10. Take the square root of 4, you're going to get 2. And you're left with the square root of 10. So 2 square root of 10 is going to be the sum of these two right here. Those sums equals to this. So those points fall on a straight line. Those points are collinear. Okay, next is using the distance formula to develop the equation of a circle. Now from the distance formula we have this. Here's we, here we have a circle at the center of the circle or at the origin. Okay, the radius is from the center of the circle to a point on that circle from the origin to here is x and then that distance that's parallel to the y-axis is y. Okay, So here r is going to be equal to x squared with well, the square root of x squared times plus y squared because you have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So now, the equation of the circle with a center at the origin and the radius is r is going to be this formula. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Similar to the, the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. Now, let's say that the distance, well, let's say that the center is a point in the coordinate plane and it's not at the center. Here we have h and k. 
which is a point that's not at the center, and then we have a circle. Okay. So now, using a distance formula, we have r is equal to the square root of x minus h, that's x2 minus x1, x minus h, at quantity squared, plus the square root of y2 minus, well, y2 minus y1, y minus k, and that's squared. Okay. And that's equivalent to the radius of that circle. Using a distance formula, this will be that formula. And then if you square both sides, you're going to get this particular equation of a circle with the center at hk and the radius at r, which is going to be x minus h quantity square plus y minus k quantity square. And I'm going to give you an example of just this particular type of problem here. Let's say we have the center at negative 3, 4. The center is at negative 3, 4. The radius is 4. And I want to come up with an equation of a circle with those uh, given conditions. The center is at negative 3, 4 and the radius is at 4. Okay, so here is where we use this formula x minus h quantity square plus y minus k quantity square is equal to r square. The h and the k are, are the coordinates of the center of the circle and the r is the radius. That's the center is h and k as your coordinates. Your radius is 4. So we're just going to substitute h with negative 3. So we have x minus negative 3, that's squared, plus y minus k, that's 4. So it's y minus 4, quantity squared, is equal to r, which is the radius, that's 4 squared. Now x minus the negative 3, I can rewrite that as x plus 3, quantity squared, plus y minus 4, quantity squared, then 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. Okay, that's the equation of the radius of the circle with a radius of negative 3, 4. I mean, the center is at negative 3, 4. The radius is 4. x plus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared equal to 16. Now, in this case here, let's say that I was given an equation like this. x minus 3 quantity square plus y minus 2 quantity square equaling to 100. And I want to find the center and the radius of that particular circle. You're given the equation of the circle, you want to find out what the center is. To find out what the center is, this is your h and this is your k. You take the opposite sign because the standard form was x minus h quantity square. Here we already got the minus, so that means that 3 had to be a positive 3. We already got the minus behind the y, so that 2 had to be positive. So the center is 3, 2. The radius comes from r squared, and that's taking the square root of 100. So the square root of 100 is 10. So the radius is 10, the center is at 3, 2. Okay, another example, let's say x plus 2 quantity square plus y minus 3 quantity squared, that's equal to 5. And let's say I want to find the center and the radius. Okay, now in this case, since standard form is always x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared, 
For this to be a plus 2, the 2 had to be negative. So the center, the x coordinate is negative 2. We've already got the minus sign there, so the k had to be, that 3 had to be positive. So it'll be negative 2, 3 for the center of that circle. And r squared is 5. Which means to find the radius, we take the square root of that. And in this case, it's just simply the square root of 5. So the center is negative 2, 3, and the radius is the square root of 5. Okay, so that should help you with some of the homework problems in section 14-2. And I will conclude this video on the Pythagorean Theorem, the distance formula, and the equation of a circle.